Hey, what's going on guys? Today on the channel, we're gonna be talking about the iPod Touch 7th generation and whether or not this is still a solid device to use here in 2023. Now, this device that you see here, and I actually picked it up last year once Apple announced that the iPod Touch was being discontinued. I was kind of iffy about going out and buying this device, but I am so glad that I did. Literally, when I went to my local store, there was only three of them remaining. So the iPod has been around for a long time. And the iPod Touch was actually my first ever Apple device. I got a third generation, and I've had iPod Nanos and uh, Shuffles even, just all sorts of different iPods here and there. Uh, but the iPod Touch holds a special place in my heart because, well, it was my first ever Apple device. I went from a third gen to a fourth gen, and then after that, I got an iPhone, like most people do, <laughs> and then uh, I just now got this seventh gen. So the iPod Touch is a device that is basically from 2019. So we're on 2019 hardware, but we're running pretty latest software here. I mean, we are able to run iOS 15. So it has a very uh, kind of quick feel to it uh, to have this older hardware, which is pretty interesting, but we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Let's go ahead and talk about the design of the iPod Touch. So if you're not used to uh, older Apple devices or you haven't held a smaller device in a long time, well, this is going to feel like a shock to you. I mean, the modern day iPhones absolutely uh, just overshadow uh, the iPod Touch 7th generation. I mean, you have this uh, four inch screen, which back in the day seemed like a lot, but now if you have a new iPhone, well, it's way bigger than that. Also, this device, of course, has the chin. So we have a top and a bottom. We even have a physical home button, which is pretty cool to see. Still have your front facing FaceTime camera. Of course, we have a headphone jack because this is an iPod. It's very unusual to see a headphone jack on an Apple device. Lighting port, speaker grill. On the left hand side is where you'll find your volume knobs and you'll find your lock button up on top. So it is cool to see this kind of older looking design, but it's still a very modern and handsome looking device. The particular one I have is space gray aluminum. Of course, you do have your camera there on the back, which is Actually a pretty okay camera for what it is. It is 8 megapixels. Uh, it can record in 1080p, so it's good enough. It's adequate to get the job done, um, but we'll show you that a little bit later. And your flash, you have the little cutout for your Wi-Fi uh, signal up there. But overall, this device is still very nice looking uh, today. Uh, it is a little bit hard to hold in the hand, I will admit. I really should probably get a case. Uh, for this thing. Probably the funniest thing though is trying to type on such a small screen. It has definitely been a while since I have typed on a small screen. The keys are really close together and everything just looks kind of different on this smaller screen. Uh, you know, I have an iPhone 13 Pro. The screen obviously is way bigger. Uh, refresh rate's different. So it just takes a little bit of a learning curve kind of but to think about it, we used to use these kind of devices all the time. So it is crazy to think about how we came from this size screen, from this performance, this design, to what we have today, which is pretty cool. Let's talk about the performance of this device in 2023. So the good news here is that you are still getting software updates with iOS 15. So yeah, the ability to run iOS 15 is very very nice and we should be getting software updates for this for several years to come because they are still to this day updating iOS 12 devices. Now of course you're not going to get any new feature updates which is understandable but if there is a security issue that comes up you will be able to get those updates. For example last week when the round of updates came out for uh, iOS 16 I was able to upgrade this iPod Touch to the latest version of iOS 15, which is version 15.7.3. So you're basically getting security fixes probably for the next several years. Now this device actually shipped with iOS 14, so really it's not too far off. I was kind of hoping Apple was going to 
continue support along with iOS 16 because this device does have the A10 Infusion chip, just like my iPad does. I'm sure the iPod is a little bit more underclocked than my iPad, but the iPad can run iPadOS 16, so it is interesting that they chose not to continue to update it. I'm sure mainly it's not really performance wise, it's probably more of like a screen size thing. I don't know. We'll never know, I guess, why Apple chose not to move on with iOS 16 on this device. But again, it is nice to still receive security updates. And iOS 15 still has basically all the same features of iOS 16. So you can still use all the modern applications and features. And this device works very well still with all my other Apple devices in the ecosystem. So it's really not a big letdown that we still have iOS 15 on here. Now, as far as the chip, the A10 Fusion chip, well, it runs pretty good. I mean, you're gonna notice that there are some slower loading times from time to time, uh, but I've done a gaming video with this device in the past and there really wasn't any uh, dropped frames that much. So it still performs very, very well. The only issue, of course, with performance is the battery life. Yeah, the battery life on this device is gotta be the worst. I don't know, I mean the battery, I guess it's a combination of the newer software and everything. So they claim this battery has a music playback time of 40 hours and a video playback time of eight hours. However, this device is literally dead in about a day and a half in standby mode. Like literally, there's times where I forget, plug it in, and I'll come to try to use it, and the thing will be completely dead. Just doing simple tasks with the device unplugged, it's going to drain the battery really, really quick. So if you've got this device for a child or somebody like that, and they're gonna be doing a lot of gaming, or video watching, or streaming, or something like that, you might wanna make sure they're near a plug because uh, they're gonna need it. I mean, the battery life is just, it is really, really bad. And this thing usually lives in the charger. I use this thing to record uh, some videos from time to time, and I have to keep it plugged in when I'm recording at 1080, 60 frames per second, because literally one video recording could drop my battery by 20 something percent. So it's really, really interesting. Um, you just need to kind of think about what you're gonna be using this device for. If you're gonna be using it for music, then I would say you'd probably be fine. But if you're gonna be doing a lot of gaming or watching YouTube or videos or Netflix, I don't know, whatever, you wanna think about the battery life. Now I kind of mentioned the camera a second ago here and I actually do use the camera uh, pretty frequently for some videos. I don't know if you guys are able to tell which videos are actually recorded with the iPod Touch, but most of the time if I'm recording a video about an iPhone, like my iPhone updates or whatever, it's probably recorded with the iPod Touch 7th generation. So that can kind of give you an idea of how that actually looks. And the camera is, you know, it's okay. It's not anything amazing like what we have today, but it is more than adequate uh, performance here from this camera. The rear facing camera is eight megapixels, which is totally fine. The front facing camera, however, is pretty kind of rough. It is 1.2 uh, megapixels. It definitely looks better on the screen, but then after you take the picture or you're on a FaceTime call or something, it is just, ooh, it's not that good. The front camera can do 720p uh, video recording. And then the back camera for videos, like I said, you can do 1080p at 25, 30, or 60 frames per second. So the camera is more than enough for most people. I mean, you're not going to be able to take any crazy up close macro shots or uh, action shots or anything like that. But if you just want something that can take decent pictures or record a 1080p video, then this camera is gonna be just fine. Just remember though, if you use a camera a lot, your battery life might suffer. And that's pretty much uh, what I have to talk about here with this device. Now, really the main question here is if you're browsing eBay or you get the opportunity to buy one of these devices, and you want to use it in 2023, 
or maybe over the next few years because like I said iOS 15 is definitely going to be getting security updates for several years to come. Is this a good device to buy? It's really tough to say yes because when you look at eBay or other places you can almost buy something like an iPhone 10, 10R maybe for a little bit more than $200. And if you can get a device like that, then there's really no sense in getting an iPod Touch, especially when they're all still hovering around that $200 mark. But this is a still a solid device. Maybe you want just a dedicated music player. The iPod's got you covered. Maybe you have a, a child or a younger person who doesn't quite need a phone yet, but you want them to have an Apple device like this, then it's perfect for them. Really the biggest thing to me is the battery life. The battery life is not good. It's not good. Uh, and if you have a kid who's gonna be playing on this thing all day long, well, it certainly isn't gonna last all day long. So should you use this device in 2023? I would say it's still fine to use. You're still gonna get security updates. You still have iOS 15, so you can use all the latest apps and games and things like that. Still a very smooth running device, good performing device. The only thing is the battery life. Maybe you can get like a battery pack or something to plug in, uh, but then you can also get an iPhone, older iPhone for just a little bit more. And even if you don't want somebody to have an actual phone, well, you don't have to put a SIM card in it. You can just have that device. So yeah, guys, that's what I think about the iPod Touch in 2023. It's still a really cool little device here, but it's just kind of one of those things that, well, I guess it was just time for it to go. But yeah, guys, let me know what else you want to see on the channel do with the iPod Touch. I can make plenty of videos about it. I have some other ideas up my sleeve. But yeah, guys, that's all I got for you today. Thanks for watching the channel as always, and I will catch you all in the next video.